Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. This is a follow-up video on the Niji 1500 milliwatt mini laser engraver. Now if you haven't watched the unboxing video, do watch it. It was just purely unboxing. And as promised, I'm going to be doing a, an, operation, an operation video wherein you can see how things are going and some inputs on the things that I've discovered as I was as I was doing its proper operation. First things first, you need to, if you can remember seeing this one, put this into your computer and then you can see a zip file, extract it and you will get that one, this it's called a Bluetooth series of DKBL. From that folder, Bluetooth series of DKBL. From that folder, press it's it's got a number already so step one that's clearly what you need to do step one click that and there's a driver XA so when you click this it uploads the driver number two is step two you'll see this the Niji V 2.1 XA the Niji V 2.1 XA is the program is the software program that allows you to drag pictures to this okay this if I click this it will get you to this this is what is engraving now So the first problem that I had was how to how to edit the pictures. It was simple. It was really very simple. This software you just drag, you know. This is not how it looked like looks like when you open it. When you open it, it would say that uh, drag pictures here. This is drag pictures here. So find any pictures in your in your hard drive that that you save and then just drag it there but for for sampling in that bluetooth series of dksl they also have sample pictures that you can work with and the first thing i printed was this one <laughs> And I lost the sample so I printed out that one and it turned out okay I was using I was using the burn time see that there's a here in the lower part there's a burn time it would say how deep your engraving would be so for that first Iron Man thing that I did, I think I was just doing a 30 burning time and it goes up to 120. And it was fairly light on on the sample wood that I did. My three year old got it, but this is the wood that I did it on, so now when I was trying to figure out how to import the pictures I was looking at uh, how to put the Android app into my cell phone because I wanted to edit then it just dawned on me that there's no editing done to it it's just you you drag the picture for example I have this a bunch of pictures 
that I just got from the web and then just drag it into here from here from this you just drag it into here in this big square box you choose the scale you can zoom out to make it smaller or just and it's very easy after that you press the send image to machine it's in this it's in this upper right corner after you send image to machine then it's gonna say that it's all ready to start and then just start now this image has already been engraving so the black part is the one that hasn't been engraved yet and the red one is already the finished finished part they're being engraved there I'm putting it in a wooden karambit so what I've usually found is to get better to get the best result is burn time when I was doing the kydex This is the Kydex that I was working on because that's him there in the background. So that's the Kydex. I uh, first did it on, it looks good. And another one that I've sampled. Both of these were printed on 120 burn time. Burn time that you can see here. You need to be in a very well ventilated area. The Kydex does not smell good and I'm sure it's gonna give you cancer if you smell lots of those things. The fumes, I mean, coming off from those. The wood, not so much. The wood actually smells nice. <laughs> but still, I suggest you be in a ventilated area when you do your engraving especially for the kydex both the kydex and the hardest part for me was learning how to to do the software i think and uh, transfer of the, the images and everything is self-explanatory there's a uh, here on the, this side here, there's a po point positioning to the center and positioning box. You always start with a positioning box because it gives you the outline of the square. So if you have this big and the laser is pointing outside of where you want to point, so just zoom out so the, the image comes smaller and the laser would just be pointing around that square and you're good. And the thing with the laser, when I was using it last night, turn off your your machine first when you're not using it, and place your 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 sample, whatever you want to to engrave, without the laser turned on. It was very hard on my eyes, especially. I I all I all I felt it really fast because I was not using this somehow. So I suggest you use this when you when you're playing anywhere near the laser. Now I'm quite far. I'm I'm sitting here and I'm quite far from there, so it's okay. I'm in a swivel chair, so that's the work area there. But please, to save your eyes, use this. But the thing with using this, you can't see anything because it's really, really dark. So my trick was have a flashlight ready 
zoom it in that way you can see some light in your subject and you'd know where that laser is pointing just something that I picked so that you can save your eyes using a cheap laser eyewear protection and it has worked so far this thing is almost done it's just the tip that's being engraved we're coming into the 10 minute mark and let's just wait for that um, the quality that it gave on the kydex was really nice you know it is properly properly nice this one as well so it's good that I have kydex now and it's just finished wait I'll get it from here That looks properly nice. I like it. So there you go. In that small amount of space, you can still burn that in. And the burn looks burn looks nice. There you have it folks. Uh, do hit me comments if you have any questions regarding the usage of the Niji 1500 milliwatt laser engraver. I'd answer them so that you can get going with your engraver. Hope you like the video. I see you guys in the next video.